Welcome to the bullpen. I'm kind of nervous for this one. And it starts with just your name because I want to get it just right. Although I don't think I'll have the right, you know, spin on it. Elam Wallam. I did it. Okay. The I'm sure people tell you this. You just say it quickly, but it's a smooth, brilliant name and your brilliant talent. Um, CEO of Edgar Watch Company, actor on numerous television shows that we all love, films including AMC's The Walking Dead, Netflix's Slasher, frequent guests on Fox News, Western Journal, and The Daily Wire. So it's an honor to have you um, in the bullpen today. And I want to talk about your work, um, but I want to start with with this ongoing the strike um, because a lot has changed and a lot could permanently change. The stakes are high, and just you know, reading the the article from Variety and there's there's many out there. Jennifer Lawrence, Meryl Streep, your fellow actors, um, Rami Malek, urging um, SAG after leaders to take a hard line. Okay, they're they're saying basically when it comes to the writers and the strike and everything that's going on, this is not the time to have a middle ground. It almost sounds like they're saying. Don't negotiate here because the stakes are too high. What say you? It's such a complicated situation because there's been such an advancement in technology so quickly. So everything that has to do with streaming has become completely unfair to any of the talent, whether it's the writers, whether it's the actors, because no one was prepared for it. No one had a way to deal with it. And so just the most basic things like residuals got thrown out the window, which is a major part of how people survive when they're in this industry. So there has to be something that changes there. The problem is that some of the things they're asking for on AI, in my opinion, are difficult because it's coming. It's a new technology, it's coming and it's dangerous to everyone in the arts. I always thought, I'll just say this, I always thought that the last thing that would be taken from everyone because of AI would be art. I thought that was the last wow. thing that computers would get right. And that's the thing they're amazing at apparently, <laughs> so it's, uh, it's scary. Yeah, it is scary. And to hear you say that, that, you know, they're perhaps being aggressive in, in that way because it is so scary. But then what, what can one do? You know, I read an article and it was stunning to me that there are writers who have penned um, hits, been part of collaborations that are just incredibly well received by audiences around the world. And they sometimes can't or can barely pay their rent. People don't understand the business. They think someone such as yourself, a writer, if you're part of this TV world, you're all rich. And so enlighten people about the haves and the have nots. Yeah, there's a huge misconception about about anything in, in this kind of artist world. So one of the main things is you could write a huge, huge hit for streaming television. And whether it's Netflix, Hulu, whatever it is, there's no guarantee that you're making any money off that past what they initially paid you. So you could have one of the most successful shows in history, which some writers out there do have. And it doesn't actually benefit you monetarily. You might be able to ask more on your next gig. But we've kind of come into this place where people don't know how to set up long term stability for themselves because of how streaming has changed the industry so fast and how no one kind of kept up with it. To the point of saying, okay, we need to be more transparent. These companies are not transparent, by the way, with how many views they get and kind of the royalties that should be paid out because there's no structure for it in place. So there, yeah, there's no direct correlation to being successful as a writer on a show and necessarily having millions of dollars. That's just not the case anymore. And so I want to talk about sustainability and if things don't change, if certain aspects of the industry will collapse, because some people think that's true. But before we get there, you mentioned the streaming and again, just the research. There is so much money that's being made. And you've said that, well, you know, it came on and people didn't really prepare for it. And it it feels like these powerful companies, they did know it was coming, or at some point realized how good this can be. And we're talking now about enormous greed. Enormous greed. Because they're making so much money and breaking off so little to those who stirred the drink, so to speak, that it is what brought us to today. Is it an unfair assessment? 
I think the problem is you have now an entire library at all times of every show that's ever been made, mm-hmm. every movie that's ever been made. So if you're a writer, if you're an actor, if you're trying to come into this industry, there's so much competition, there's so much content being created all the time. It's become so hyper competitive. And we've stepped away a lot from making really story driven shows to stuff that we just know is gonna push and sell, push and sell. And I think that's part of the problem too. We have to get back to being hyper creative because maybe that's the area we beat AI when it comes out. Maybe there has to be something that changes in the industry. Um, I almost wish there was less content, but there was better content because I spend 400 hours a day trying to look for a show I wanna watch and I don't know what to watch. We get this kind of choice paralysis. So if you're someone trying to present value nowadays in the industry, it's very, very difficult. Can the audience then help? Because perhaps if more of us are channel surfing or content surfing and we're not satisfied, um, demand is not being met. Can the audiences do anything to help with leverage here? Well, the power is entirely in the audience's hand. I mean, what you watch ends up driving what people in these studios put money toward. Uh, You saw with The Flash, Uh, I guess there was a backlash toward Ezra Miller. I don't know exactly if it was that or just DC superhero fatigue, but the movie had a big hit when it came out and then it just crashed after that and it's, it's been a disaster. So everything is driven by the consumer, by the viewer. Uh, I guess the the question comes down to what kind of future do we want to create in this industry? Because Mm -hmm. a lot of artists are just getting burnt out. You have a lot of content that's coming out that in my opinion is not at the standard it should be because we're not incentivizing people to create great stories anymore. Uh, Studios are just pushing for money, money, money. And then you have this industry that we have now, which is everyone kind of feels at a loss. They don't feel like they can sustain their lifestyle. They feel like they've just become gig workers who no one cares about. And it's sad, you see, I'll tell you a story that's that's really oh, ridiculous sure. in acting. I worked on a TV show and right during COVID, they were worried that we weren't gonna be come back on. So they scanned us and they took our likeness for perpetuity for that show. I don't even know if I'm entitled to my own likeness on that show. That's a Black Mirror episode. That is literally the Black Mirror episode that just came out. Wow. But that's where we're at. They will just scan you now. They'll scan you and say, okay, now we have, you didn't read the fine print. Do you actually have the right to your likeness? Um, and I think in the future, you're gonna see more and more and more of that. It's just stunning uh, because I, I was talking to a creator, a director about this a couple of weeks ago. And he said basically what you just said. And I said, but that's stunning. And, it, and we then began to talk about commercials and why should a, a beverage company hire, say, a, a whoopee when they can just kind of create their whoopee? And she's not going to talk back and she's going to do what they say and deliver it well. And it's going to be well received. So, What more, and I wonder if you worry about backlash. When you have major talent like Jennifer Lawrence, Meryl Streep, um, who they're not really going away. And I don't know that they have to worry about it. But others who are signing on and who are helping the cause, including writers who are taking a hard stance here. Is backlash part of this thing? Can it be, will it be, is it? I mean, in the end of the day, it's, Without the writers and the actors, there's really still, we're not at the point where we could just create content without them. So sure, there's gonna be backlash, but if you take a hard stance in something you believe in, I think it's absolutely necessary. Again, I feel bad for everyone involved in this industry because I just don't know where it goes in the future. And so I'm always thinking about that. I'm always thinking about what's the next step. And it always comes down to just keep making good content uh, you know, there's gonna be, I think the whole industry, all of Hollywood is changing. I think there's becoming new outlets for people to make money on their own independent channels where they can go out and they can put something up and people can support them there. Uh, I'm hoping there's a return to some extent to some of this VOD stuff where people pay uh, to support the artists they like. And, you know, I hope we take a trend to more of that, towards that. But uh, I really don't know. I don't know where it's going. Elam, I hear hope. Um, as I hear desperation as you set the scene for what's going on in Hollywood now and some of the changes. But I, I did hear flashes of hope in your last answer there that there are other ways that people creative such as yourself can turn to. Um, and so that, that seems positive, you can correct me if I'm wrong. But I also wanna know what you're working on now and what excites you um, 
in the coming days and weeks and months and year. I just like making content of any kind. That's the thing I think most artists just like putting stuff out. So it doesn't matter to me personally if I if I'm making as much money on it. That's just me as an individual. I just like going out and creating content. I did a documentary which is really interesting recently on psychogenic epidemics and and kind of society as a whole and how we're starting to have groupthink and polarization. And it's just I'm just working on stuff I'm passionate about. In the end of the day, I never went into the arts. And I think most you know, actors, writers, and everyone go into this just wanting to create stuff. They don't think about the money end of it until they have to. They have to put food on the table for their family. And that's where all that comes to. But um, I have a ton of hope. I think there's gonna be so many new outlets for us to create content. And if you're really driven by that, then you'll find an avenue for it. Um, you know, It's just one of the realizations is acting might not always be the thing that makes me the most money in my life. Okay, I'll still do it. I'm still passionate about it. Um, so that's where I'm at with it. Yeah, and you're great at it, and let's hope it continues. I'm gonna give you the last word with this. Um, I had an actor tell me that, and a content creator, that the problem is when you bring a lot of the creative juices in, that some of the studios, they, they're not interested in that. It's very formulaic nowadays. Um, well, this was popping over here, and so this is what we're going with. Everything, you know, it's like the cyclical thing. Everything's a judge show, everything's a whatever. And so I wonder if um, you find that. And if that stamps down on creative juices or no, that if you just thread that needle and find the right place for your content, dreams can be realized. If you want to go with anything mainstream, absolutely, that's that's part of it. Everything is hyper formulaic, and mm. unfortunately, you do have to step outside of that and take a hit on how much money you're going to make if you want to do something hyper creative. Typically, um, art house films don't make as much money as you know big blockbuster films. It's just how it is, and so. The creative end of it is usually more personal and you find an outlet for it. Well, we appreciate you joining us. We love you, we'll support you, we root for you. And I hope you'll come back and join us again on the bullpen. Thank you so much, Elon Mullen. How's that? Is that okay? It's close, Mullen, Mullen. <laughs> Mullen, you see that? I should have left it well enough alone. But we appreciate you and good luck to you. Thank you so much.